All right, guys, so I'm going to walk you through how to install Ubuntu server on VirtualBox. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have the ISO downloaded from the link that I sent. We're going to do the install using a network install or a mini install, meaning that it downloads the files during installation instead of having them pre-burnt to the CD. This is cool because you um, the download for the ISO is really small and when you're done everything will be up to date because it will use the latest links. Um, disadvantages are you have to have a network connection in order to do this so make sure that you have a good connection to the internet before you start. Once you have the file um, what you're going to do is create a new machine by clicking the new blue button. Uh, if you type Ubuntu into the name it should automatically select Linux and Ubuntu. I'm going to name this one Ubuntu 64-bit. Make sure that the type says Linux and the version says Ubuntu 64-bit. For the memory size, you can leave it at 512 just because we won't be using the machine that much and um, Ubuntu server doesn't need that much memory um, just, just running on its own. So um, you can leave it at 512. I'm going to do uh, 1024 just to give it one gig of RAM. You're going to want to create a virtual hard disk, so keep the middle one selected and click Create. You can leave the name the same. You can leave 8 gigs the same. Um, actually, everything on this page you can leave as is. And go ahead and click Create again. And you'll see a new VM. Um, if you want to be organized, you can create a group by right-clicking the VM and then selecting Group. And it'll encapsulate it in a group. If you want to change the name of that group, right click in the near the name and then click rename group and then you can type in a new name. So before you start the machine, you actually have be, there's nothing installed on it. Just giving it a name doesn't actually put Ubuntu on it. You have to um, put a virtual CD-ROM into its drive. So if you notice under the storage section, it says that there is an empty um, IDE master. What you're going to want to do is click settings, go to storage, select the empty disk, so it's like an empty CD-ROM drive. Go over to the right and click the CD image and then click the folder to choose the file from somewhere. Um, find the mini file that we downloaded earlier and then click open and it's put a virtual CD in the drive, click OK and then click start to boot the VM. So it should boot and look something like this. What um, I like to do before I get started is figure out what the host key is. If you notice on any of the menus, if you want to do anything, it says host plus F. On Windows and on Linux, the host button is right control. I believe it's the same for um, Mac, but I, you want to make sure you have the right key. You should get a warning telling you when you click in the first time, but you just want to know ahead of time so you don't get stuck. Um, before we let it take over our mouse, what we're going to want to do is switch the view. So click the view menu. We're going to switch to scaled mode. So when you click that, what it'll do is allow you to adjust the size of the window and scale everything to whatever size it is. So you can make it as small or as large as you'd like so you can see things a little better. So once I click inside the window, my mouse will disappear. And if I want it back, I hit control to bring it back. And so if you ever want to test what your host key is, just check and see if your mouse shows up and comes back to you with it. We want to install, so we're going to choose the first option. You're going to select your language. We're going to hit enter through the rest for like the next five screens. So English, United States. No, we don't want it to, to detect the keyboard layout. We want to use US English and US English. It's going to detect the internet connection and see what's going on and figure out the IP address. Shouldn't take too long. From there it's going to ask you what the host name is. This is not your username. This is how you, the name of the computer that shows up to your router or any other computers on the network. 
Most people leave it the name of the operating system. Um, sometimes they describe certain things with the host name. So you could say like, this is Ubuntu VM, just in case you have a real Ubuntu on the network and maybe a, a virtual machine. But for now, since you're the only um, computer on the virtual network, it is not too important. So I'm gonna leave it as Ubuntu. Um, you're gonna want to choose United States as the mirror or the, the place where we can download the file. And we're going to use the archive um, from the US. We do not have a proxy, so we're going to leave that blank. And then we're going to give it a few moments to uh, start downloading some of the packages. It's going to take a few seconds, so don't be afraid if you get a blank screen like this. It will eventually show up. However, I'm going to pause it until it comes back up with a new screen. So now that it's figured out where to download the files, it's going to start loading the rest and downloading the rest of the things that it needs to complete the installation since we're using a net install. This process takes a little bit longer um, than a traditional install on a, on a full CD, but you will save time um, once you boot up because everything will be up to date because it'll be current based off of what's on the um, repository as of today. So I'm going to pause it and let it load through and come back when my percentage is a little higher. So once it's finished loading um, all the files, it's going to then ask you for the full name of the user, not your username. So you're going to type in something like your first and last name. You honestly could type in anything here. What they're going to do is try to make a guess as to what your username is going to be. So it's going to make Callie my username. You can also change this to whatever you like. Um, so, But just make sure you remember what it is. For your password, um, right now it's not too important because I it's very unlikely that someone's going to hack into this virtual machine and get anything off of your computer. But um, in general, when you're making passwords, it's actually better to make long passwords that are really easy to remember um, than to just do like eight characters with crazy symbols and stuff. Um, basically, all you need is at least one lowercase letter, one uppercase letter, one number, and one special character like a space or a dot or a dash, something that's not a normal character. Um, and then make it above eight. Like if you write a full sentence, that's actually really good. You could also make a password and then fill the rest of it with a single letter um, so that you just taking up extra space and makes it longer to crack. So I'm gonna do um, a password that meets all those requirements that I'm used to. So just make it something that you can remember. It doesn't have to be too fancy. Um, it'll ask you if you want to encrypt your home directory. For this install, no. Um, if you were worried about someone grabbing um, files off of your computer, um, like with a live CD and being able to see your files, encrypt it because it keeps people from seeing your folders if they're not logged in as you. Um, but for right now, it's not importing, so we're going to do no. It's going to grab the time um, based off of your IP address. So give it a few seconds to process that and then it should tell you like America, New York. Um, and if it doesn't, you can manually change it. So picked up the right time zone, I'm gonna hit yes. It's gonna detect what kind of disk we have and then load a few more things. So this will take a few more seconds, but not too long, so I'm gonna let it run. So um, after that's loaded, it's going to ask you how you want to partition your disk. A partition is when you take a physical disk and then break it up into smaller logical sections. So let's say you had a two gigabyte, or sorry, a two terabyte drive, physical hard drive. You could partition it um, by making two partitions so that one partition is one terabyte and the other partition is another terabyte and use them as two separate disks, even though they're physically the same, on the same disk. Since we're doing a virtual machine um, and you can set the size of the disk that you want, we are not going to partition the disk, so we're going to use the entire disk. It's still going to ask you what partitions on there because by default a hard drive comes with only one partition. Um, so we're going to select the one we made earlier. Then it's going to ask you do you want to write the changes. You're going to say yes. Um, 
the two partitions that you see, partition number one and partition number five, um, the X4 is actually where all your files are going to be saved. Um, the swap is like a hybrid between RAM and hard disk, where if you're running out of memory, it'll put things in the swap area so that um, it can store a little bit extra, kind of like overflow, and then swap it out for RAM. So what it just did was formatting your hard drive because it's virtual, it's a little faster, and then it's gonna start installing the base system. This is going to take a while, probably 10 or so minutes. So I'm gonna come back periodically throughout the install um, so that you don't have to sit and watch it load forever. Alright, so now that it's finished installing, it's going to see what packages you want to add to um, your Ubuntu box. Packages are are like um, files that you download. In Linux, they have a package manager um, so that you can download any program or most programs that you want um, using the same syntax. You don't have to go around the internet to find them. They're all held in a repository. So right now, apt is the um, package manager for Ubuntu, so it's finding different packages most people want when they do a server. So it might ask you, do you want to do the web install or the SSH or the DNS or just the basic? And we're going to go with the basic right now because we're not going to use this server for anything. Um, you will see a lot of uh, Ubuntu websites out there. Um, you might hear it referred to as a LAMP stack. Um, we'll go over that more in the future. But we are just going to con figure the basic and then we're going to add a few packages to it um, later on so I can show you how you manually add those package and see how the whole process works. So I'm going to pause again so it can download a few more files and then come back when it's ready. So now that it's finished downloading um, what it needs to, it's going to ask you whether or not you want to, um, how do you want to manage upgrades. I usually say install security updates automatically just because those are the most critical for your machine. Um, you can choose no automatic updates and we can change it later if you need to. Um, but in general, I usually do install security updates automatically. So it's going to grab a few more files and then it's going to ask me what packages I want to put on to the server. So we'll give it a few seconds. So I'm given a list of different files that I can install. Um, you can actually install several different packages. Um, whoever is the Linux admin is going to need to know how to do a DNS server, so we'll go into more detail with that. Um, person who's going to be the web admin is going to need a LAMP stack. Um, so both of you will need SSH. Um, we'll look into some other things. <laughs> there, You can actually install Ubuntu desktop from here if you wanted to, but that's not the purpose. We're just going to go with the basic Ubuntu server. So if you press the space bar, it will select it by putting a star inside and then press tab to go down to continue and then hit enter for it to install. So that's going to take a few moments. It's going to download a whole bunch of files, but package files are actually really small um, for the most part. So while it says it's going to take five minutes, it probably won't. Um, so we're going to let that process and run and I'll be back when it's done. So next, after it's finished installing packages, um, it's going to ask you to install the Grub bootloader. The bootloader is what actually um, gets your machine to start an operating system. And it is crucial, probably the most important step in this whole process. Because if you don't install the boot, the group, uh, the bootloader, um, it'll, the virtual machine will start, but it won't start Ubuntu. 
So you want to definitely select yes for that. It should only take a few seconds, and then um, it'll ask you, do you want to use UTC, which is Greenwich time, um, where we base all of our um, time zones off of, so you're going to hit yes. And then it'll say that the installation is complete. So you're going to need to eject um, the CD from the computer, otherwise it's going to boot right back to the CD and try to install again. Um, so what you're going to want to do is get out of um, scaled mode, so you're going to have to hit your control, right control, which is your host key and C to get out of scaled mode and go back to regular windowed mode. Um, the reason why we do this is because there's a menu bar down at the bottom. Um, there is a CD-ROM and it tells you what's in it right now so you can see that I have the mini ISO in there. If you right click that, you can click remove from drive, which is basically ejecting the CD. Um, It'll, you might get this error where it says force on mount um, just because sometimes it, the virtual box can't decide whether or not your machine's actually using it. It is safe to hit force on mount. It is, it's like putting a paper clip into your CD drive to force it out. Um, and then once that's ejected, you want it to be grayed out so, it sh so that it has nothing in there. And then you want to hit continue. Um, at this point, you can go back to full screen or scaled mode if you want to, if you want the bigger size. So, with that said, it should restart with no CDN and it should take you to the login screen. And so whatever username and password you set in the beginning, you can type it in. Um, my username is Callie, so it'll show up beside the login. But when I go to type in my password, it'll be hidden um, for security purposes. So I'm going to type in the password that I made during installation. And then when you log in, the first thing it gives you is kind of a snapshot of what's going on. So you have the system load, you have the type of Ubuntu you have installed, how many processes are running, how much, what percentage of memory you're using. Notice we're only using 5% of that one gig that we gave it. So it, it really isn't using much memory right now. Um, that's the cool thing about Linux in general, but particularly server, because there's, there's not all the extra GUI, you're saving so much more um, memory, which means you can use it for processing. Um, it also says that there are zero packets that need to be updated. That's because we use a net install. The, when you get done with the net install, everything is up to date. If we had done a full CD install, you would have had a hundred or so packages to update. So it's the same thing like when you install Windows and you boot Windows for the first time, or you have to reinstall it after a long time, and you have like a hundred updates. That's why, because it's going, when you use a full CD, it is installing old things. And when you use a net CD, it's installing uh, and selling the newest things. Um, so what, what I want you to do here, now that you're done with the tutorial, you should be good and set to go. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. There are a couple things I want you to do. Um, I want you to tr play around, try out some of the commands that you were doing in the, the class, the Linux class. And then I want you to, there's a command I want you to run and take a, um, take a picture of and text it to me so I can see how you're doing with your Linux or use it to ask me some questions. Um, a couple of things about commands. When you type a command, say like we type echo hi, um, what echo does is just print to the screen. Um, so when you type a command, there is the command part and then there's the argument or the thing that needs to go with that command. Um, so if I type echo hi, it prints hi to the screen. Um, cool thing about Linux, if you press up, it goes back to a previous command. If you press down, it comes back to the next command. Since we've only entered one, we can't really go that far. But do know um, on the on the commands that I put in the email, there are two separate commands. So you need to press enter between each one for it to work properly. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks. Oops, one last thing. Um, to actually shut down your machine and to go over how to use sudo, you're gonna need to type in sudo sudo um, and then to power off your machine or to turn it off, you need to type in power off. And then it will, when you hit enter, it'll ask you for your password, which is the same password you use to log in. And then you should be able to power off your computer. There you go.